This is the BAM Weekly Muni Market Update. I'm here with Grant Dewey and Chris Flossy from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Gentlemen, thanks for being here. Uh, we're coming to the end of our first quarter, a really interesting first quarter, a lot developed this, uh, this uh, period for the Muni Market. Grant, let's start with you and talk about uh, how things played out on the volume side. It was a fairly significant year over year increase, but there's a catch. Why don't you tell us about it? Right, so um, exactly. Long-term Muni issuance came in uh, at 105 billion, Mike, which was uh, versus about 87 billion a year ago. So uh, the 19% increase, but that was um, you know, largely uh, skewed given the fact that really for most of March last year, the, the primary market was shut down uh, due to the uh, you know, due to the pandemic, obviously. So um, and uh, you know, another thing that we're seeing is a significant shift. Uh, back to tax exempt issuance, uh, you know, in March we had about a 30 basis point rise in the 10 year treasury. And we've had a 75 basis point rise uh, since the beginning of the year. So, you know, a lot of the taxable advance or fundings have fallen out of the money. And, um, and that also um, has impacted it really, you know, it, that leads to obviously an incremental increase in tax exempt issuance. Interesting, though, despite the fact that the, the balance of the market skewed more towards tax exempt, tax exempts for the quarter outperformed the taxable uh, market very well, right? It sure did. I mean, performance wise, tax exempt uh, muni index only had a slightly negative 0.04% uh, um, you know, negative return. And that's, again, in, in the context of a 75 basis point rise in the 10 year and a 70 basis point higher on the 30 year. So muni's had strong performance in the quarter. Uh, even though it was the first quarter uh, uh, in three quarters that there was a negative return. Uh, and I will say that the high yield component, the triple B and high yield component of our market outperformed. There was you know, obviously some credit optimism uh, around stimulus um, and, uh, and also reach for yield. So there were actually positive returns uh, in both the triple B and high yield sector. Is it fair to say that the buy side is still kind of being measured in their uh, in their risk appetite? You know, we, at BAM, obviously, we're in the insurance market more broadly. We're continuing to see strong penetration and uh, increased utilization on double A category transactions. People are still remembering some of those lessons from last March, right? Uh, absolutely, I think that um, you know it feels like a long time ago, and the market has rebounded pretty dramatically. But I do think that it it kind of uh, had a had a um, you know, an impact on psychology that I think is going to be around. We saw much higher penetration rates uh, in 2020, and, and uh, we're, we're seeing the same thing so far this year. So Chris, let's get you into the conversation. I think there's an old cliche that says April comes in like, or March comes in like a lion and out like a lamb. Um, and that's kind of what we're seeing in the new issue market, right? It's uh, relatively quiet this past week. This is a, a holiday shortened week because of Easter coming up and even next week's volume is relatively constrained, but uh, still activity. What, uh, what kind of transactions did you see? Sure. So in this past week, BAM was able to price $185 million of par across 17 series in nine states. So we had some broad utilization in the states. We saw a deal come in Georgia, Louisiana, Alabama. So some, some good uh, mix of states there. Some, last week, we mentioned a few deals. There was a St. Clair Board of, Board of Education deal in Alabama with Raymond James. And that had two series. There was one tax one, one tax exempt. Um, there was a Pennsylvania College of Technology transaction with Stiefel that totaled 50 million in par and that also had a one taxable and one tax exempt series. And also mentioned last week, uh, Ramirez and company priced a $25 million Allegheny CCD deal in Pennsylvania. So this week we also saw a pause in the competitive space. A lot of the deals uh, were, have either been pushed to, the, to Q2 or pushed out a little further. Uh, so we saw a a, a lag in volume this week. We expect that to see more transactions priced next week, but not necessarily in the par volume. More transactions in 15, 15 million or below, but a lot more transaction than we've seen uh, in the past couple of weeks. And, you know, while the, uh, the current uh, volume is a little constrained, uh, there was a lot of news this week that suggests that that's going to change fairly dramatically in the, in the near future. The Biden administration put out its uh, framework for an infrastructure proposal. And um, one of the things that's very interesting there is it's, it's a request, obviously, 
we expected the Biden administration to propose a lot more spending from the federal level. It looks like they're going to utilize programs that historically have generated municipal bond issuance as well, programs that are kind of risk sharing between the federal government and local governments. Um, so they use municipal bonds to raise matching funds, whether that be for the highway system, uh, for transit grants or airports. Um, so I think there's obviously a lot of work to be done on, on the potential impact on the market, but uh, there are potentially hundreds of billions over the next eight years that would have to have some level of municipal bond financed matching money coming into it. So that uh, would continue to drive new money uh, utilization. Um, are you hearing anybody, uh, Grant, what did you hear from the market this week, people uh, looking forward to that yet? I, I think that, uh, you know, we have kind of a, feels like a holiday shortened week and um, not a lot of activity, but um, I do think that it's, uh, it's gonna be a bit of a shot in the arm and, you know, just, Communities, uh, as we mentioned, have been performing strongly, and I think the additional uh, supply, along with additional demand, that um, you know potentially higher taxes, corporate taxes, and individual taxes, uh, will have on the market. So I think that we'll continue to see a bit of a of a tailwind uh, in the second quarter. And of course, the fact that the administration proposed it doesn't mean it's going to become law automatically. Right. Uh, still a, a slim majority in the Senate. So uh, we'll see what kind of uh, compromises happen. But right now, it, it is an interesting, uh, fairly straightforward, fairly simple plan, and one that I think will uh, will have munis at the center of, uh, of financing some of these improvements. So. Well, thanks guys for uh, being with us. We'll, uh, we'll obviously keep uh, providing updates on that as it, as it plays out through the rest of the year. Uh, congrats on a good first quarter, and we'll, uh, we'll talk to you next week. Great. Thanks, Mike. When the market is unpredictable, BAM gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, including natural disasters, financial fraud, pension issues, and economic disruption. So while America rebuilds, BAM has you covered. BAM. Build America Mutual. Talk to your investment advisor or visit buildamerica.com.